Junkie Nation, gorgeous George and Goes reporting for duty here on a Thursday. We get to talk to OAM Olivier Aubin Merseille, who is coming off a big win in the first regular season, uh, not game, but set of fights from the PFL. And now they're going to have their next set of regular season fights on June 23rd. It's a Friday, and they're on ESPN. You can catch it at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. He's in the main event against Anthony uh, Romero. He's already ranked three points as he proceeds through this season to see if he can be a back-to-back -back champion. Hello, OAM. How are you? I'm good. And you? Good. Thank you. Um, how was your first title defense? That's how I looked at it. I know it's a regular season for the rest of you, but I see it as a title defense. Yeah, I don't see it as a title defense, but uh, it w went good. It went good anyway, so... Uh, it was a three round, so I, I wouldn't call that a title defense. Uh, but it was good, it was um, easier than I thought. And uh, I feel great. I feel great. All right. Um, I hear you. It, it's, it depends on how you feel. That's the most important thing. If you don't yeah, feel that exactly. way, that's fine. But the thing is, is um, in PFL, I guess you guys won't have title defenses. So I guess it almost seems like a success or failure type of a season. You either win it all or I mean, maybe failure is too strong. But like, for example, Goes and I, we root for the Lakers. We just got eliminated the other day, and a lot of people are calling it a failure. I look at it as, well, we got deep in the playoffs. We just aren't going to hang the banner. We're not going to be the champs. But do you see it like that? It's either success or failure, or can you gain other things along the way? Uh, yeah, I see it uh, as a success or failure, but uh, you know there's a more uh, there's a lot of things that, that could happen. You know, like I could uh, I could lose like a four in the tournament. I could lose the my next fight. I could get injured if I get injured. Like there's no fight anymore, so it's pretty crazy that uh, there's a lot of option and the best option, of course, is uh, to to win it all, but. Uh, it's gonna be still gonna be a long path. I have three more fights, and uh, right now I, I would say the, the 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 what to worry me. It's uh, my body, you know. It's a uh, it's still three more fights. I mean, last fight was good. I I got maybe a little cut there, but that's pretty much it. Uh, my foot was a little bit swollen, but that's that's it. So I, I was good, but. Um, you know, every fight, every fight is gonna get harder on the body, and uh, I think that's the big, uh, uh, the big worry for me the, this year. Do you still like the format the way it is, uh, regular season and playoffs? Well, do I like it? I don't know if I like it, but I'm gonna do it. Like for sure, it's a, uh, like it's a big achievement to finish it. So, mm -hmm. uh, do I like it? No, I don't like it. But uh, it's a it's a greater uh, achievement, you know. Uh, to achieve something that you don't like, it's it's better than something that you like. Yeah. What would you change about it? Would you do it like Bellator and the UFC do it? You just get a fight whenever you're ready, and then there's a road to the title, and one day you compete for the title. Is is, is that, or is there something in the middle between what PFL is doing and the other leagues are doing? No, I think it's good. I think the um, like. It's different than everything. So, like as an athlete, I think it's hard because you, you cannot just cancel a fight. Uh, if you don't fight, it's done, you know. But uh, I, I wouldn't change a thing. I mean, it's a great challenge. Uh, like uh, for sure, I don't. Like I said, maybe we don't like it, but it's a, it's one of the greatest challenge in combat sports. So, uh, I think he, it should stay like that. Yeah, because the flip side is. We hear from a lot of fighters that want to fight and they don't get the fight. The The matchmakers aren't getting back to mm -hmm. them. And next thing you know, eight months go by. When you fought last April, you already knew you were fighting on June 23rd. So there's got to be some comfort in that because it is your job at the same time. That's how you pay your bills. So you know when your money's coming in too. Yeah, well, yes. But at the same time, I would have taken a little bit more... Uh... Vacation, uh, I would say. I think it was a little bit in a rush. Um, I think we we talked about that in the last interview. But like when I started the training camp, the last training camp, I was like, oh my god, already, you know, there there was not a lot of motivation. But 
I mean, it, that's that's my work. So I, I went to training every day. Uh, I didn't skip a freaking training, all training camp, and I pushed myself for every training, even though the motivation was not there. And I think it showed it during the fight. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would have taken a little bit more education, to be honest. You know, you're right. We did talk about that last time, and, and you shared with us that you were – a little reluctant about hopping into this season, but now with one fight down and technically almost two training camps in, are you happy with the decision? And how do you feel like you're holding up as compared to maybe same time last year? Uh, I think I was in a better shape for uh, my last fight than the first fight of the last year. Uh, so I was a lot better. And I think I'm in better shape right now than uh, still last year, the second fight. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's, I'm getting, I'm getting old, you know, <laughs> so for sure there is some uh, challenge during this training camp. And, uh, I mean, that's okay. That's PFL. And, um, it's to be honest, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of fun, you know, to have those kind of challenges. It's motivating. Uh, so I feel, I feel good. I feel good. This training camp, it's, it's better than the first one anyway. Do you think as far as ahead already as like next season, like there's no way I would ever do it again? Or do you kind of address that at the end of the season? Yeah, I'm going to address that at the end of the season, but uh, I was planning maybe not to do it. But then they sign Enganu, uh, they sign Jake Paul. So, and they, there's a rumor, you know, the, the Bellator rumor. That is flying around too. So let's see what happens. Do you feel like you've already taken out the biggest threat so far in this first fight? Um, I wouldn't say the biggest threat, but one of the biggest threats. Yeah, uh, I, I do. I, I still think uh, Nathan Schultz is uh, it's the guy to beat this year. Um, but there was two guys to beat, I think. And it was uh, Nathan and it was Burgos. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I think I have one more big guy to beat. What did you think of the signing of Francis Ngannou? It was pretty historical because it wasn't just here's some money. I mean, he got, you know, he's going to be the head, the chairman of the uh, PFL in Africa. So he's going to have a big say in their growth there. Um, he's going to have some room on the board for fighter advocacy for you know, the PFL that you're a part of as well. He guaranteed a certain amount for his opponents. So when you heard about all that and you thought about it, you know, what was your reaction? Uh, well, first I was happy, you know, I was happy for PFL. It's uh, like there was a lot of view because of that. And But it's going to be, I think, challenging for PFL to uh, make it uh, worth it. You know, uh, I think there's a lot of money behind that. We... I don't think we'd know exactly the amount, but it's going to be a big challenge for PFL to uh, make it worth it. And uh, they need to make it worth it uh, because we know what's going to happen after that. But uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's nice to see, you know, it's nice to see the, the sport changing and it was historical, like you said, and uh, I'm really happy to see him here and let's, let's hope uh, maybe sometime, uh, sometime, uh, I'm going to become the CEO of the Canadian PFL, you know? There you go. There you go. I like your way of thinking. Um, all right. Like Goes asked you, you said you have to think about next season at another time, but you said it did into your head, like about maybe not participating. Does that mean you would sit a year out or would you say, hey, I only want to do the pay-per-view events, uh, you know, but, but still participate somehow? Well, I, I'm going to see the option, you know, uh, I don't know what's, uh, what are the options, but uh, I'm going to see, you know, I'm going to have to talk to them. Uh, but uh, I think three in a row is going to be really hard. Uh, it's going to be really hard mentally and uh, physically. So I have to see at the end of the, the season, uh, like if it, everything go right, like I don't see why not, but like... <laughs> With the experience of last year, I think I'm going to skip out the next one. Is the worst thing, what, what is the worst thing? Is it the weight cuts because they're so close together? 
or just those actual training sessions, like you said, you don't miss any one of them. Is it the actual training sessions in between? Uh, I would say it's uh, you get tired, you know, because you fight, you take one, two weeks to see your family, to to enjoy life a little bit, and then training camp, and then you fight one, two weeks training camp. So it's it's hard mentally, you know. For, for a year, you become like a uh, this crazy person that don't go out and do nothing but training. So um, I think I would say that was the the hard uh, the hard part, you know. Uh, at some point, I was like just I was just waiting for the end of the fight to be in vacation for my two weeks, you know. It was it was a little bit crazy. So and when I I won the, the tournament, I was more happy happy about the the two months vacation <laughs> mm -hmm. than the, the million dollars. So uh, I think that's I think. It's it's pretty much the the big thing you know you there is so much uh, sacrifice that you are doing during the uh, the year that uh, at some point you have to end you know I, am i going to do that for 3 years i, I don't think so I, I think i'm going to try to enjoy uh, life a little bit more uh, like i have a lot of fun training but like when it become crazy like that i have a little bit less fun the good the good thing is i i make it always fun always uh, mentally challenging you know for me but still the fucking conditioning man i'm sick of this thing but uh, like <laughs> i said i i don't skip a day i don't skip a day i like tra I, I like mma I, that's my uh, that's my passion conditioning it's not but i don't skip a day and i have to do it it's my homework uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward for a year without freaking airdyne or <laughs> thing like this. <laughs> I'm just curious, were you good? Did you do good in school? What would you be doing if you weren't in uh, MMA? Uh, I was terrible. I was terrible. Uh, I don't know what I would be doing. Probably uh, like some artist, you know, that you don't yeah. need school. Yeah, I'm lazy. Uh... <laughs> You got skills. You can. You, you, you know, I, I was um, studying in multimedia when I was younger, mm -hmm. and I was really bad at school uh, uh, before that. But when I went to multimedia, something that I kind of like, you know, computer uh, making website and everything, I was mm -hmm. pretty good actually. I was one of the the best in the class, and uh, um, I think that the creation. I really like to create, uh, so I think that something with uh, with creation, you know, and. Let's see what what I'm gonna do after. I mean, I mean, like I, I had a podcast for maybe two or three years, uh, like a couple of years ago, about the MMA in French, you know. And I think it, it, uh, like people liked it. I, well, I feel like uh, they liked it, and I think it was pretty good what I was doing actually, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see what happened after. But I'm gonna do something like this. I, I really like to create, so um, let's see if I can find something to uh, to create again. Got it. Okay. Um, I know one subject you probably didn't do good at, and that's math. And I'm going to tell you why. Because technically, OAM, after you win your title in October, you don't fight till April. That's not two months. That's six months vacation. Now, I get that you have to prepare yourself for April, but aren't you kind of shortchanging the vacation? Exactly. So, you, you know what? Months off, don't you? No. So, it's... Two months vacation, and then you have to start uh, the training again, the training, the the hardcore mm -hmm. training, you know. So that's why I, I'm telling you, like, yeah, on paper, uh, you say it's six months? Yeah, because you finished, like, it was towards the I, end of October. So November, December, January, February, March, April. Yeah, now, so I thought it was five months. So it's uh, one more month, but, uh, yeah, so it's not really five months because you have to start again uh, training as – as soon as you can so yeah i, I was able to do some uh, uh like to pass some time with my family i was able to uh, to see my daughter a lot uh have some time with my girlfriend we went to vacation you know elsewhere but still i'm telling you it's it go uh go by fast you know and you have a lot of interview after that too so for a month i was just working i was just uh, doing interview i was just uh 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 calling people you can like people like you guys <laughs> so yeah it was it was it was still work 
So uh, maybe I had one more, one more month of uh, truly like nothing to do. And then uh, the, the, the next one I start again. And that was a training camp. So yeah, it, it was fast. In my, in my mind, it was really fast. Well, no one's ever done three in a row. So maybe between if you can get through the season healthy, maybe make some quick work of the playoffs or something, maybe that'll be your motivation. That third one in a row, no one's done it. But in the meantime, I guess the mission is to get the second one in a row. And so far, so good. You're 1-0 this season. You got your three points. You got uh, your opponent coming up here, Anthony Romero, in a, uh, what is it, about a month. So we wish you the best of luck. It's always fun to talk to you, OEM. Keep doing what you're doing, and uh, thanks for the time as always. I got oh, one last one. Now. That's one more question. I, this is just a silly question, but I'm kind of curious. Everybody's <laughs> got their price, and Nganu's opponent is guaranteed two million. If for some reason something happened to that opponent and they called you with enough time, would two million dollars be enough to get you in the ring with a, a guy like Francis Nganu? Uh, two million? Uh, no, not right now. Not right now. Maybe uh, a year ago. Yeah, for sure. But right now, I don't know. Maybe I, I could just stall, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just go. You know the Ryan All uh, uh, mm -hmm. technique? Like Every time the other guy uh, moves, just go on the ground and hope for the best. <laughs> I think that would be my strategy, you know. <laughs> gotcha. um, nice. But yeah, he, 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 yeah, he probably would go berserk on me if I was uh, that small compared to. Him. But yeah, that would be scary. I don't think for two million. Nah, uh, I don't think so. What's the most? But hey, way? but like, like, let's say let's say they tell me like, okay, so you can't fight him. Let's let's try a new thing, you know. You have one hand and you have two hands and then you you fight him. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna do that. Like one, I I I think one hand, it's good. You know, I, I I'm good to do that. One hand. Yeah, yeah. one handed and Ganu. I think I I, I would do it. <laughs> what do you That's think? Funny. If yeah, honestly, if good. he has one hand and you have two, I I think I would pick you. Yeah, I think I would win. Like yeah. the uh, if you have one hand, I think I would win. Mm -hmm. Well, you can, you can blind him too, you know. But what if he can use the second hand after round uh, two? Would you still do it? No, <laughs> no, it's one hand for a fight. For the whole fight, <laughs> like, because yeah, because the, the the thing with one hand is you just have to concentrate on the end, and you cannot grapple. So, like, let's say I'm so fast that I can dodge all all punch. If you have two hands, it's just. You can grab me by the neck and break it, you know. But you can't <laughs> if you have one hand, it's different. You know? He's only What's got that? one hand to defend the submissions, though. You can't get him in the first two rounds. Uh, I don't know, because <laughs> you can uh, you cannot stay close to him. So even trying to uh, to take him down is so big that the elbows got. Oh, there is no elbow in uh, in PFL. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, maybe the armor fist will be uh, enough, uh, but uh, no, I would stay, uh, I would stay uh, away. You know, I would stay away. Mm, gotcha. All right. Good stuff. Thank you, OAM, for the time today, man. Best of luck in your training camp and everything else leading to your fight on June 23rd. We'll be tuning in 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Thank you so much. I see you. Uh, see